In this video, we're going to take a look at expressing square roots of negative numbers using i. And i, of course, stands for imaginary numbers. Because remember, we can't find a number that when we square it, we get a negative because any number when you multiply it by itself is going to always give us a positive. So we bring in the i, which stands for imaginary, to deal with situations like that. And it all hinges on this. The square root of negative 1 is equal to i. Okay, So we're going to use that to allow us to simplify situations where we're trying to take the square root of a negative number. So let's start with this one. OK, so what we're going to do is break this up into the two pieces that will make it up so we can simplify it. And those two pieces are going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Remember that we can break that up into those two things. So this square root of negative 1 is just i, and the square root of 4, well, that would be 2. So in this case, we're going to end up with this being equal to 2 i. Okay. How about this one right here? Again, we're just going to go ahead and break that negative number up that's inside the square root into the square root of 81 times the square root of negative 1. Okay, remember, we can do that. There's that square root of negative 1, which again is i. So we have negative square root of 81 is 9 times i. That piece is i. Okay, how about this one right here? Again, I'll do it in two steps, but uh, you could just do it in one step as I write this out here. First thing I want to do is take out that square root of negative 1. Okay, So that's that i piece. Then I focus in on this part right here. Remember what I want to find there is perfect square factors so that I can simplify it. Because 32 is not a perfect square. Square root of 32 some ugly number which we don't want to deal with. So perfect square factors of 32, well remember those perfect squares we have 4, 9, 16, 25, uh, 36, 49, and so on. And the biggest one that we can put into 32 would be 16. So I'm going to break that up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1. Okay? So all that together would get me back there to that negative 32 then I can simplify those pieces. So square root of 16 is 4. Then I'm going to pull this i out front because that's kind of the standard of how we write it. If there's an i, you want to put it out in front of the square root. And we've got that square root of 2 sitting there like so. Okay. And the reason we put the i there in front is because, well, if we put it back here and we're not really, really careful, that might sneak under the square root. And it's definitely not that. Remember, i is the square root of negative 1. Okay? All right, how about this next one here? Well, we've got a 2 sitting out front, but then we go inside and we've got the square root of negative 18. So, first thing I'm going to do is pull out that square root of negative 1. Again, you don't necessarily have to do it in multiple steps like this. You could break that down as well. But I like to just make it very clear where that negative 1 is going. Okay? So then, factors, perfect square factors of 18. Well, 9 is going to go in there. Let's see what's bigger than that. 16. Nope. 25 is too big. So it's got to be 9. Okay? So we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1. Okay? We have 2 times this is 3 times that i. I'm going to bring that out front. So there's an i. And then times that square root of 2. Okay? Still just a tiny bit more simplification to do. And that would give us the 2 times 3 here. Because and we can do that because it's all multiplication. It's 2 times 3 times i times the square root of 2. So we can do the 2 times 3 to get 6i times the square root of 2. Okay? All right. Now, how about this one over here where we have the square root of negative 1 ninth? Okay. Well, 
remember that what we can do is um, <coughs> break that up where we have the top number and the bottom number each with a square root so I just took the square root and applied it to the top number and the bottom number separately and notice what I did I took that negative and stuck it on that neg one on the top we wouldn't put it on both pieces because if we did and we pulled the fraction back together the negative would cancel out and we don't want that because clearly we have a negative in there so I just leave it on the top one and then I can do some simplification so in this case there's an I sitting there square root of negative one and the square root of nine is conveniently three okay then next one down here five square root of negative or five times the square root of negative fifty two again I'm gonna try and do this one in one step this time so fifty four square root of fifty four well perfect square factors nine would be one let's see can we go bigger than that I don't think so so we have the square root of nine times the square root of six times the square root of negative one okay again that would all combine back together to get that negative fifty four then I can simplify so it's gonna be five times square root of nine is three that square root of negative one is i times the square root of six then we just clean that up so five times three is fifteen i times the square root of six okay and there we go okay so simplifying square roots uh, with negative numbers are of negative numbers with i it all hinges on this right here okay we want that i which is the square root of negative one and that allows us to pull that piece out and then simplify what's left and we apply the rules that we know for simplifying square roots and we can come up with all sorts of uh, situations like this hope this video was helpful keep working hard on your math you can do it